Right back here on the Bernie and Sid Show on 77 WABC. Heard everywhere on the WABC app. And on the line with us right now is a guy who got his start, believe it or not. He worked for uh, Mike Huckabee back in the day. Uh, a good friend of ours, Sidney and myself, we, we have intimate uh, friendship with Mike Huckabee, Governor Huckabee. And now Hogan Gidley is a White House. Well, he's a, technically the deputy assistant to the president and principal deputy press secretary. It is a great job on TV. Hogan Gidley. Good morning to you, Hogan. Thanks so much uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Good morning, guys. Thank Good morning, you. Hogan. It you is a it. pleasure. So, Hogan, let me just say this. Uh, yesterday morning at about 11 o'clock, I'd say somewhere approaching 11 o'clock, after they took a break, after Gordon uh, Sondland's opening uh, t- statement during the Im- quote-unquote inqu- the impeachment inquiry hearings, I thought it was over for the president. They ran out to the cameras, and I'm like, uh-oh, he's dead. They got him dead to rights. And I'm a big Trump supporter. And I thought, wow, this is it. The jig is up. President's going down. And then, well, the rest of the day happened. What, what, tell us about yesterday. <laughs> well, look, we've always said the president is his best messenger, and I think that was kind of proven yesterday. You saw a little gamesmanship um, in a partisan way from the Democrats, of course, and that's to be expected. Elections have consequences. They run the House. But as soon as they got done with that first set of testimony, they didn't allow the Republicans to start to question immediately. You see, they went to break because, you know, Ambassador Sondland and the rest of the team needed a break. What that meant was it allowed that first little bit of testimony to sit and allowed it to go unchallenged and allowed all the headlines to be written and the cake to be baked. The problem was uh, there was a whole day left. Right. And what started off that back half of the day was the president actually went out to uh, the uh, the cameras right on his way to Marine One before we took off to the Apple plant in Texas. And he basically stands up and read the exchange between himself and Ambassador Sondland in which uh, Sondland asks the president, what do you want? I'm hearing all these rumors. I'm hearing all of these issues. What do you want from Ukraine? And the president said, clearly, I want nothing. I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. I want the guy who got elected to do what he said he was going to do, which, of course, in this instance, in context, means clean up corruption, because everyone knew, Democrats, Republicans alike, that Ukraine was one of the most corrupt countries uh, on on the planet. So that was kind of the, the, the tone setter from the President of the United States. And, and quite frankly, the rest of the day lined up uh, perfectly for this administration because it proved what we already know, that the President's done nothing wrong. And this whole process has been unfair from start to finish. And whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, you get that. And also, one thing that's really clear now, after weeks and weeks and weeks of this, and after two years of a Russia investigation that turned out to be a hoax and a witch hunt, the Democrats are doing nothing for the American people. Uh, this president's had record-setting accomplishments and record-setting time, and they're not doing anything. No issue that – we're heading into the holidays, and they're not talking about a single thing that actually affects real families. And uh, I think that's on display uh, over here in Washington, D.C. Bernie and Sid, live here on the NJDiet.com studios. You know, Hogan, uh, there's no question that Sondland came out and said the president asked me for nothing. He wanted nothing. But he did at least uh, intimate, he tried to uh, throughout the day, that Rudy Giuliani was the guy kind of doing President Trump's dirty work. What, what about that assessment? What about that contention from Sondland? Well, look, I, I obviously don't speak on behalf of Rudy Giuliani. I speak on behalf of the president. But you're talking about a man in Donald Trump who was under a, a Russian witch hunt hoax for two and a half years. I know they're investigating the vet investigators as we speak. But it would make sense that someone in, uh, would look at their private counsel and say, hey, could you figure out what's going on and why – um, you know, I was, I was run through the ringer with no proof and no evidence. And when you look at the Steele dossier and all this nonsense the Democrats are doing with foreign governments to dig up dirt on Paul Manafort and the, and the president, uh, president's campaign, then Donald Trump at the time, it would make sense. You look at your attorney and say, hey, go find out what, what's going on over here. I need to know. Um, but, but as far as Sondland and his relationship with, with Rudy Giuliani, I, I don't know, and I don't know um, a lot of things that, that he was saying up there as, as far as testimony under oath was, I feel like it's my opinion that I'm presuming this. He didn't have any real evidence or real information other than one particular fact that when he actually 
address the president directly on these matters, forget Rudy Giuliani, forget uh, all the other things he said, when he actually addressed the president, the president said, no, there was no quid pro quo. I don't want anything from Ukraine. And when he, uh, when Ambassador Sullen implemented the State Department and, and Mike Pompeo and, and Mick Mulvaney and the vice president, all three of them uh, issued their own separate statements saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I, the meeting you're talking about never happened. You never talked to me about those issues. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's more this, this hearsay and conjecture uh, for, for someone who's a shaky wit- witness at best. Absolutely agree to 100% Hogan and Gidley. No surprise. Again, I'm a big supporter of the president. But regarding this uh, holding up of aid for a, essentially a nanosecond in the grand scheme of things, I mean, the president was worried about corruption in the Ukraine, which is notorious, one of the worst corrupt countries on the planet. Also, the origins of the Mueller hoax, understandably, get to the bottom of that. That's what the Democrats wanted to do. And the fact that the Europeans are not paying their fair share to help protect Europe against Russia. So the president was doing his due diligence. He was looking out for the American taxpayer, America first. Sure. And these nameless, faceless bureaucrats, they were actually, like this guy, Lieutenant Colonel Vinland and maybe Yovanovitch, they were actually putting Ukraine's interests ahead of the United States. Look, I'm old enough to remember when Democrats actually cared about getting to the bottom of what happened in 2016. It seems like when Donald Trump is is the target of their investigation, then you know they're all fine with that. But when Donald Trump says, "Wait a minute, what happened? I want to take a look at 2016 too," and he's doing the investigating, he doesn't like you know they, they don't they don't want any part of that. And, and look, I understand, but all of these witnesses that they brought up weren't witnesses to anything. None of them, until Sondland, had ever been in a room with Donald Trump, had never had a phone call with Donald Trump, had never talked to him directly. So this whole thing is built on conjecture and, and hearsay and opinions of, of what, what may have happened. But, but here's what, simply put, every single person they brought up, and I watched the Democrats try to weave this narrative, and they went through a lot of people's names and a lot of people's locations and phone calls here, and I overheard this, and a staffer uh, told me that. It's it's like the line from um, uh, Spaceballs to bring up an old reference. It's like my father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate <laughs> yeah. told me this. Heard it right? from a friend. Yep. Yep. That's right. That's right. Um, that old song too. And, and so it's like everyone who who they brought up, even though that they weren't with him, uh, and didn't talk to the president directly. When asked directly, was there any evidence of bribery? No. Was there any evidence of a quid pro quo? No. Now, it makes total sense to the American people in the simplest of terms. When you ask somebody, do you have any evidence of this? No. Then they get that. And one of the things I have to bring up, one of those Democrats, I think it was Quigley from Illinois, he brought up, he's an attorney, by the way. He literally looked at one of the witnesses and said, hey, look, I'm an attorney. A lot of times hearsay is better than direct evidence. Yeah. Now, uh, now how are you going to fight back against the no, he can't, say no, is no. better than evidence? That's crazy. Uh, he crazy. he, he, he couldn't, couldn't pass the no. bar in this state. No. Hogan Gitley, deputy assistant to the president and um, principal deputy press secretary. So, look, I mean, we see what's going on here, the closed-door uh, sessions. Hogan, now, of course, the public hearings which have gone nowhere. I'm sure you watched some of that fifth Democratic debate last night. So with all the controversy and all the stuff going on swirling around President Trump, you're around him. I got to think he is more confident now than ever that he's going to win again in 2020. I rode with him for most of the trip down to Austin. It was a a three-and-a-half-hour flight. We were in the office for most of the time. I was with him most of the way back as well. So I was with him for about, you know, four or five hours of a seven-hour flight yesterday. And he couldn't have been in better spirits. I mean, he's watching this all unfold. He's tweeting about it. Uh, We're having a conversation every once in a while. And, look, he's not focused on it is what's so amazing because all of these attacks, they don't hurt him. They hurt the American people because, as I mentioned, we're not talking about lowering prescription drug prices or uh, fixing the southern border or um, the infrastructure needs we we so desperately have uh, a need for across this country. No, no, we're talking about this sham political uh, power grab here. He's so focused on getting work done. We're over in Austin, Texas, on the expansion of an Apple plant. Um, they're here because of the president's economic policy. So he's working really for the American people. But as far as his overall spirits are concerned, I mean, my goodness, the Democrats have said now for two and a half years of a Russia investigation and this, they have proof, they have evidence, and it's never materialized. And I got to say, look, whether it's the lies they're telling about collusion, Kavanaugh, a cover-up, a whistleblower, now this impeachment nonsense, 
the American people, I think, they're, they're, the patience is starting to wear thin, and you see that in poll after poll. Is independents are really starting to swing away from this yes. because they're they're looking around going into the holidays saying, hey, what are you guys doing for me? I voted for you to to work with this man to get something done on my behalf, and you're not even coming to the table? You're, you're just playing politics? I think it's a big problem for Democrats. Boy, you ain't lying. Uh, Hogan Gidley from the White, White House spokesman, Hogan Gidley, record low unemployment, record high stock market, energy independence. People know that, and this USMCA deal, with some, some people may roll their eyes over, it's important, and they're not getting that stuff done. Despite that, the economy is still humming, and yes, you, you pointed out you were with the president at this uh, new factory in Austin, Texas. I mean, promises kept, opening factories, bringing back jobs to the United States. People see it. You met, in Wisconsin, for example, they're not having this. The polls show they're not having this impeachment nonsense with, where it counts in the swing states. Uh, oh, absolutely, and that's what that's what matters is because people at the end of the day want their politicians to actually do something for them. And the Apple plant is a great example. We were there with Tim Cook. I mean, remember the manufacturing was gone. Barack Obama said you got to bring have a magic wand to bring that back. Well, it turns out the magic wand was Donald Trump because he's sure bringing manufacturing back to this country and the economy, in which people at the New York Times and others said that would be irrevocably damaged if this president were elected. Well, here we are seeing 130, I think, at this point record highs in the stock market. And before anyone says for a second, well, that's the stock market, that's Wall Street. Wait a minute. The stock market affects the 50, you know, the 60, 70 million Americans who have 401ks. It affects the 50 million Americans who have pension plans, the 30 million Americans who have IRAs. Um, and the USMCA, as I bring another acronym into this conversation, um, is, is a perfect example of a piece of legislation that everyone likes. Uh, the Democrats who won in those blue districts or excuse me, one in the districts Donald Trump won, but they, they won those in the congressional seats. They want the USMCA. Now, I understand there aren't any farms in Ocasio-Cortez's district, but there are <laughs> farms across this country yeah. that stand to benefit immediately from USMCA, not to mention the car manufacturers, um, dairy, wheat, wine products, all those things uh, that we deal with Canada on and others. I mean, this is a massive trade deal, and whether it's with Japan that we've already secured, we're finishing up, hopefully to, to sign soon with China, a massive trade deal. The president's reworking all of these deals for the American worker, for the American business, for American industry. And we've been taking it in the teeth now for 30, 40, 50 years in this country from other countries. And this president said, I'm not doing that anymore. America first. I'm going to protect our people. Doesn't mean China won't, he wants China to fail, but they're not going to, they're not going to succeed. Um, and, and, and make us lose in the process. We can both succeed in this country. We want free, fair, reciprocal trade in all platforms, and that's what he's working for. Yeah, he works, uh, as you point out, constantly for the American people, while the Congress does nothing but hate. That's all they do is hate, sure. distractions. Now, listen, now we're out of time. Hogan Gidley, spokesperson get, for the White House. Get, go, my, get my Giants back on track, please. Okay? Oh, God, it's never going to happen. <laughs> my Giants, I love it. Yeah. It's from Arkansas. Hey, we, got Eli, we got Eli East Bench. We got Evan Ingram. We got all the Ole Miss guys trying to trying to help you guys out, okay? You very gotta, good. Get them back on track, okay? Very good. Ole Miss, who uh, uh, actually played LSU very tough last week, Hogan. You, you, you whiffed on Tunsil. <laughs> you, had, you, had, you had Tunsil. We had him. He went to Houston instead yeah. for the Miami. Very very good, Hogan Gidley. Very good. Hey, listen, you were great, Hogan. You do a great job. Thanks for coming on the Bernie and Sid Show. Anytime, guys. Have a good All one. All right. Appreciate Take care. It.